welcome to Otaku, the show where otaku talk about otaku topics. And today we'll be talking about Japanese storytelling versus American storytelling, a very big topic which we will hopefully get down uh, uh, as deep as we possibly can in the time we have. And I have with me three folks this week. I have uh, Rising Zan. How are you doing today, Zan? I'm doing good, everyone. And hello, everyone. Rising Zan here, here to give you your storytelling focus in Japan and America. Very nice. Also, Miniman. How are things going, Miniman? I am in a very sunny and well lit place. <laughs> Quite clearly. And also, we got Brad. How are you doing, Brad? Doing pretty good. Kind of hard to top the pop head in the newscaster, but doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so we wanted to talk today about uh, just the differences between how stories are told in Japan versus how they're told in America. And I think one of the big things about this is how uh, you know, Japan just has a very different tradition in terms of what makes a story and what makes particularly myth. Um, if you want more about this, actually, Crispin Freeman does a, a tremendous uh, talk about this, and he's talked about this in, in the past. But there's, just, there's, um, th there's a very different view of what makes a hero in Japan and what makes the kind of story that they consider to be an epic story that it does over here. And it's, I think it's one of the reasons why anime is, in some ways, poorly received by a lot of people in America, just not understanding it. And also how it's well received by folks like us who really get that kind of a story. Um, mm. I think it's one of the reasons why sort of anime is what it is, is that folks just like that way of telling stories. What do you guys think? I often find that um, in Japanese um, writing compared to American writing, um, the, the American hero tends to be a little too pure and valiant, mm. while a lot of anime heroes tend to have their good, their flaws and everything that really flesh them out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Superman like, has all sorts of flaws, like, um, um, like, um, Kryptonite? Yeah, it's Kryptonite, <laughs> but that, that's more of a weakness. Like, exactly. if you take even, like, the, some of the more highly regarded, um, films and things over here, like um, mm. The Matrix, yeah. where you get this mm. philosophical depth. Mm. Neo is still this chosen one, really pure, yeah, perfect yeah. fighter, while over in Japan you get the, the flaws and the, mm -hmm. that sort mm. of thing. Yeah. Uh, the Matrix, Ghost in the Shell, number two and three did not happen. <laughs> It's definitely yeah. It's definitely very interesting. Um, uh, like okay, so okay in Japan, Japan has a very strong history of hero archetypes. Like mm. they have heroes like Mushashi Morima and mm -hmm. uh, even like and uh, shoguns. Like they have mm -hmm. a huge cultural history as well. Yeah. Uh, the shoguns, the samurai, the ninja. Um, Chubayaku. Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, but also, but what what do those Americans have to point out as heroes? We yeah. have politicians, and the most we have as heroes are generals, mm. is all we mm. really end up having, and well, look at what we usually, well, go ahead. I was going to say, well, we have, it's interesting actually, because we have folks like, you know, Wild Bill Hickok, we have, yeah. you know, Western heroes, we have Revolutionary War heroes, Civil War heroes, but like you say, I mean, they tend to be leaders of men, mm -hmm. um, unless you get into the, into the science side of things, which is, yeah. I, I kind of gets weird. That's the thing, though. Um, they're leaders. Yeah. Uh, they're one-man armies. And, uh, we, okay, when you look at heroes in Japan, in any shonen manga you read, yeah. what's behind him? Mm. A team. Yep. You always see the team. Goku is referred to as Goku and friends. He's referred to as the Z-Warriors. Mm. Uh, even, even a recent manga like uh, Naruto isn't referred to as Naruto, even though he could be a one-man army. Yeah. Uh, he's referred to as the ninjas of Konoha. Mm. You know, there's... There's always, in Japan, Japan has this one thing that I really like, which is basically of unity, of teamwork. Mm -hmm. While America, we have this huge problem of individuality. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. it may seem good, like, on paper, and writing about, like, these badass one-man one army heroes, mm -hmm. it doesn't work good in practice. Like, for example, <laughs> like, when was the last time you had to go to work to do another team-building exercise? Mm -hmm. Why do you yeah. do a team-building exercise? Because you weren't programmed to do it at birth because your yeah. country's all about individualism. Mm -hmm. If you look at any billboards or advertisement, what do you see? A focus on one person. 
in your country. In Japan, it's always a group. It's always like, for a golf tournament, it's always a group of people. It isn't just Tiger Woods. It's a group mm -hmm. of all these awesome golfers with these different mm -hmm. styles. It isn't just one person, which is the problem that we have in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing, because typically in West is orienting compared to uh, Eastern story, well, I say Eastern, um, Basically, Western storytelling, the typical way that it tries to get people involved is that um, you put your hope in a protagonist and therefore the tension in the story comes from you essentially trying to root that protagonist through difficult situations. Mm -hmm. In Japanese storytelling, because you have this very much uh, group mythology, the tension that she usually arises from the tensions within the team and also the actual yeah. uh, world around them. So the actual environment around them is very often a much larger deal than the single person themselves therefore people can get injuries and often uh, yeah. people inside the teams die in more in Japanese mm. uh, animes and things like that so because in American storytelling it doesn't work because it's not really stretching it out it's not mm. really it, and it does just sometimes mean it stops you know in Japanese animes and things like that people can be injured for series whilst mm. you know if you're injured for one episode in say an American TV series we can rebuild him, we can make him much stronger, da 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 you get the point. Uh, you know, yeah. they'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they also do that in Japan, Japanese a lot, you know, where someone's injured or they yeah. lose a battle and they feel terrible and they can't believe they lost mm -hmm. in such a dire situation. So what do they do? Go to the mountains. <laughs> yeah. They always go to the mountains. Yeah, there's, uh, and, there's then, a... and then, two series later, join the good guys. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're very much well, exactly that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, what you uh, talked on about was uh, the talk about here. You know, American Western stories they uh, deal with one character. However, mm -hmm. the problem with that theory is that when you focus on one character, everyone better like that one character because mm -hmm. if they don't, you're kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a whole bunch of one character stories, yeah. a la Marvel and DC Comics, mm -hmm. which is what they are famous for doing one-man stories about one well, character pretty much actually, ignoring what everyone else is about, mostly. And Mr. Artist 24 points out, though, what about X-Men? Uh, X-Men is actually the one exception, actually. Yeah. Uh, and actually, X-Men is actually, for that reason, is one of the most popular comics internationally. Mm. Even Japan has acknowledged this. Yeah. 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 And you get yeah, like, like Justice League, the, Justice Society America. The amazing thing about that, about X-Men, is like, not only do you have uh, different people from different with different powers and different backgrounds, but you also have different people from different, in different countries yeah. and from different planets even. I think X-Men's gone planetary. Oh, I'm once, sure. Or oh, once, yeah. once or another. Yeah, some spin-off series. Um, <laughs> that's the amazing thing. That's why it's doing so well. While well, you have Superman and his... Well, actually, Superman doesn't have any reincarnations, but like mm. uh, Batman's reincarnations of... Um, uh, uh, Robin? I'm not sad with comics, but you know, like the Robin becoming the Batman, mm. the, this other guy's a Batman... Uh, they're all becoming Nighthawk, all these mm. reincarnations mm. and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and well, th yeah. That's the thing, though. They, they get, have maybe duos with sidekicks, but the thing is, Japanese stories have a team. The thing is, you can like anyone on that team, you'll be fine. That's with Power Rangers, for example, Sentai. Uh, mm. You can like the Red Ranger. Most boys like the Red Ranger. Or you can like the Pink Ranger. I personally like the Blue Ranger every, with every um, uh, Power Ranger show. Mm. I like the Blue Ranger. Mm. Well, and I, I think it's actually one of the interesting things, speaking of things like X-Men, um, you know, what happened to X-Men? It turned into a Wolverine franchise. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, they, they well, really actually, pretty much all the character. characters went their separate ways, but yeah, yeah. you're right. Wolverine is definitely the most known X-Men out of yeah. all of and, them. And they really, they, they, I mean, they really... And they really pushed that. You know, they gave Wolverine his own books, and they, they really pushed that. And, yeah. uh, and I think it's one of the problems you have with a lot of those Justice League, Justice League stories and, and such things, is that ultimately um, it is hard to... Uh, and I think this actually is like one of those things. You know, Japan doesn't really have superheroes in the same way that we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you'll have someone with powers, but it's a very human person who happens to have these powers. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's actually funny that you mentioned that because uh, okay, so one comic uh, that I want to talk about is just Kinu Gaman, which basically mm -hmm. they're these wrestler guys who are superheroes. You yep. know, they're superheroes from all over, and Kinu Gaman is like the guy from Japan. But he, at the beginning of the show, he is just. Uh, he's a joke, you know. Mm. He gets bitten in the butt by dogs, and he he, he flies because of his farts. Mm -hmm. He's a complete yeah. and utter joke to the Japanese people. Really, they just want to like forget him. He lives in a shack, for goodness' mm. sake. He's a, just a joke, but uh, he rises up. Mm. Uh, he rises up, and, and also he has his friends to help him. He has 
Terry Mon, the American wrestler guy, superhero guy. He has mm-hmm. Broker Manjuria, the Nazi Germany wrestler guy to help him. <laughs> oh, and they all band together to help fight the uh, devil Shoji, which means superhero of in course. Japan. Yeah, and, you know, it works. It, mm-hmm. it works. Um, the problem with um, American uh, comics and stuff like that is that they each came from their own comics, which made them the ultimate life form. Mm-hmm. You put them all in one book... Uh, you're going to have problems. Like, I remember when Marvel and DC uh, had uh, Captain America and uh, uh, Captain America and someone else fight one-on-one, and basically they had to end in a tie. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, both of their publishing would be screwed if, like, one was better than the other. Well, I, yeah. I, I think this gets back into what kinds of sort of teams you get in America versus Japan. Um, that Mitch Artist is bringing up stuff like you know, Flash Gordon and, and uh, uh, even your Buck Rogers, a lot of those, those things. Um, you know, th- those are all still very much focused on the, that main character with a strong supporting cast. Um, True. And I think it's one yeah, of I'm, 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 not sh- I'm not saying that America is completely void of this, oh, but uh, with the, compared to uh, the comics and our, in our cartoon scene, yeah. uh, it is kind of void. I mean, yeah. Flash Gordon, but also Flash Gordon could have, you know, uh, influence from other countries, you know? Well, I think it's, it's the thing, is that, you know, you look at uh, something like Flash Gordon, uh, and it focuses very much on Flash Gordon as this, I mean, honestly, I mean, I love Flash Gordon, but yeah. he, he can solve anything, kind of. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's very much this, you know, kind of perfect guy, and I, I like that. I'm not perfect, but, um, you know, it, it contrast that with, a, um, you know, Tenchi with Ranma, with um, Shinji, you know, it, 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 name a protagonist. And yeah, it has yeah. all sorts of flaws and issues that they yeah, have to work Yeah, with. no, that's what makes them interesting. And honestly, the one thing I look in through any story is I, I don't want a perfect protagonist because yeah. you know what I don't get if the protagonist is already perfect? Mm. I don't get any evolution. Yeah. And I yeah. love evolution in any game. In a, any comic, in any story, in any mm. poem, I love evolution. Evolution mm. is the greatest thing to ever come in any form of existence. Mm. Now, this might be me looking into it a little too deeply, but mm. do you think this sort of has a thing to do with um, the strength of our nationalism versus mm. Japanese nationalism? Mm. Mm. Because mm. From, what I, from what I can see, Japan's nationalism isn't overly strong. Not in anymore. America, you get that really patriotic, like, yeah. blah. So you have to have that hero that represents everything Americans mm-hmm. think they are. Mm-hmm. And then I in, don't. in okay, Japan, I... you get more of that, that humble, flawed, improving character where here everything needs to be perfect, strong. Mm-hmm. Yes, America. Mm, I, don't, I don't quite agree with that. The reason I would say is uh, Goku. Again, Kinikuman. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, oh, uh, Kenshiro from *This Is the North Star*. These guys mm. are like one of, are like the the, the the stars, the people that the heroes that little boys in Japan look up to. They're mm. manly. They fight for what they think is right, and yeah, uh, where they, they are perfect. Because the thing is, they have their goofy qualities, and that's I think what Captain America is missing. He's not. He's not human. He's just like, I am patriotic and perfect, but I have no emotions whatsoever, except for sex. Well, I disagree with that. I mean, Captain mm. America's had a lot maybe of... I, maybe I haven't watched enough of Captain America. That's probably the problem is. Mm. I hardly read any comics as a kid. Mm. But then, I mean, if you take the Japanese characters, where did they all start out? They mm. start out at, at a weaker state, they grow stronger, they do it humbly, they learn the respect and everything. Where yeah. here, you get... You get heroes that just become heroes, and then all of a sudden they're perfect and they're fighting crime. Mm. Yeah, what, what does that tell you, though? Yeah. That doesn't tell you much, because think about it. Goku and all those others had to work hard for what they do. They had gambate, they had perseverance. Right. They, you know, they took the criticisms of their sensei, saying, like, you're not going to become anything, you're worthless. Yeah. You know, they just went through it. They, they went up to the mountains, they fought the trees, they meditated under the waterfalls. And for what? For power, for power to fight for what's right, for what's true. While Captain America, you know, uh, if, you're t- if you're thinking about the latest movie, you know, he was already a good, uh, good-natured good kid who got into a machine because he was, you know, picked out of a thousand, and boom, mus- muscles. It, which fits into the nationalism idea where um, in Japan, it's more, it's more of a growing stronger and becoming more respectful, while here, uh, Americans sort of have that feeling and sensation that 
they are Americans. They're strong. They can mm. do anything, and that's where you get the heroes uh, that can do anything. Yeah. Mm. I think but no, the yeah, only problem is they don't earn it, though, is what I would say, which is kind of false advertising. So whenever, like, a kid reads well, Captain America... I, I disagree with that, though. I, mm -hmm. I, because I think one of the points is that you earn it through your actions. You know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's one of the, the, the big things about comics, is that you have folks who are given these powers. Some use them well, some use them poorly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that, that is one thing the comics have, have managed to do, is that, um, <laughs> you know, within that context, that, you know, things are kind of given to you, um, it, you know, with great power, etc., yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like I, the thing is, like it's it's to me, it's how they get their powers. The problem, you know, Japanese heroes, they always earn them through their own ways. They want to be stronger for one purpose. They already have that reason in their mind. While in America series, they just seem to just get them, whether through mm. birth, whether through um, uh, mutations that land them for no random reason. A all a Spider Man, you know, been by a mm. radioactive spider. They they just get their powers. And they're just like. I guess I'm going to be a good guy. Uh, maybe oh. you're going to say something? Yeah, I look at it slightly differently. I think part of it is um, partially to do with the competitivity of the actual business model that uh, is the uh, comic book compared to the manga industry. The manga and anime industry is more authorial. It's more people's own yeah. uh, individual things and its popularity. While things can come off of that, it, in the end, totally always been mainstream. doesn't 100% work in that case. Yeah. And also, one of uh, the things is that because it's all terrible, also because of the actual attachment a lot of people have to the characters, um, the whole idea of learning and building up mm. is something that makes sense in that business model. Yeah. Whilst in American business model, um, you know, you're expected of a certain genre and you're expected of a certain thing. So while you can have character evolution in a series, mm. the actual gaining of such a thing isn't part of the actual business model because it doesn't advertise the show yeah. nor does it advertise the hero. Mm. Therefore, you know, for example, Ichigo Kurosaki's true power doesn't appear until about mm. 17 episodes in, <laughs> whilst Spider-Man, you know, one episode, he's got his powers. Yeah. Why? Because that's just how it works in the business model of um, the sort of more Western business model is get straight to your show, and then once you're on your show, that's when you can actually do things. Whilst and because you're expected of a certain genre yeah. with a uh, autorial style mm. of the Japanese, it, it can or at least it can sacrifice that to be more character based because in the end it's not a hundred percent about money. Yeah, well, actually. Well, uh, that's a good point. Um, uh, real quick, iFanboy is an awesome site about American comics. They've been uh, bemoaning this for a while, that one of the issues that the American uh, comic industry has is they're so focused on these, like, six-issue miniseries. And, you know, you introduce your character in, you know, again, like, one issue or two issues, and then, you know, you have to have your story in the size of a trade paperback. Um, and that, that, that's your entire thing. And so there's much less of a focus on longer storytelling. We were talking about this um, earlier in the day, that in Japan, because you're releasing, you know, 15 pages a week in black and white... 20 or so. Yeah, or 20. Um, uh, you know, that, that's... You know, you're releasing, mm, let's say, 70 pages a month. Um, yeah, 80. So, yeah, 80 yeah. or 80. And, you know, in Japan, or in, in America, you'll get 12 or 15. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a very different uh, way of doing it. And, of course, these days, a lot of stuff isn't done in issue, period. So yeah, also you have to consider, though, is um, uh, uh, whenever it's the first chapter of any manga or anything like that, mm -hmm. they always get, like, double the amount. So, yeah. like, first chapter of Naruto has, like, 70 pages in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of any first chapter, there's, like, double the amount of True. pages. True. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, so in Japan, you have the luxury of being able to really spend a lot of time with these characters and have a, a large cast. Because you're not picking it up and saying, well, what happened last... Oh, yeah, there was this guy and this girl, you know. Yeah, it, it that's one of the things I don't like about American comics. They're so thin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's not worth the money, even, and, and, for and me. They, yeah, and they come out so infrequently. Uh, just, it's yeah. hard for me to keep up. I mean, I, I, I tried for, for years, and I just couldn't keep track of things. I mean, that's, well, that's just, you know, my own brain. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it does impact how you're able to tell these stories. And then, of course in Japan where you can do these these anime series and you can really do it every week for years um, it's, just, it's, a, it's a different publishing model yeah mm. um, and it allows for these more I mean 
going back to that, that previous uh, uh, topic, you know, I think Rurouni Kenshin is probably the most perfect shonen manga I've ever seen in terms of executing on all of these levels. And <coughs> Kenshin's the hero, but we spend a lot of time on other characters besides Kenshin. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and especially Kenshin, you know, he has a lot of issues. And in fact, one of yeah. the brilliant things about Kenshin is that you know, his main weakness is his strength. Yeah. Um, you know, his big problem is he won't kill anybody and folks use that against him. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can get those sorts of things you're not going to get in a, uh, uh, you know, in a Superman. You will get in like, like a Batman, because that's a yeah. character that was, that was just, happened to be the right thing. Mm. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was going to say something else I can't quite remember. Uh... And I think also it comes back to not just the kind of heroes you have, but also the kinds of, I'd say the kind of stories you're, you're able to tell. You know, <coughs> I am so frustrated with uh, Joseph Campbell. Um, poor guy, I mean, he comes up with this, uh, this, this theory of myth. These are how myths are structured. And they have this particular structure, and you go from this beat to this beat to this beat, and, and here's how Star Wars is done, and here's how all these sorts of things are done. And so everyone starts executing on that exact... Um, formula, and that's not how things. So you know, everyone wants to have the you know the, the big introduction and then the fall and the big climactic ending. And I'm sorry, I find those simple story beats often kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you I mean, think yeah. think about it. Why did French New Wave become so popular yeah. in the forties? Exactly. Right. I mean, it is. Often things like that. I mean, I think it's it's kind of an odd premise, though, the fact that you often get this very large sort of separation between mm. this whole Western idea of storytelling or something. Mm. But you sort of got to think about, you know, how the myths actually came about. I mean, yeah. uh, and the stories that we know of. You know, uh, yeah. I can only really speak for England. I don't know very much of you know American mm. legends or something like yeah. that. But, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, King Arthur, he was, yeah. des- you know, he was destined, saw, he's destined, here's Excalibur, here's a load of tales about him, here's the greatness of this man, here's mm. all of that lot, uh, you know, Winston Churchill, mm. you know, no one really, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of historians do, but, you know, mm. the average person in England doesn't care about what he did before, they just care that, you know, mm. He did all that for us. Yeah, and yeah. Here are all the heroic things yeah. that he did for us. And you know, but when you look at sort of uh, more like mm. Japanese uh, sort of stories and all that sort of thing, mm. and even just a uh, little t- uh, which one was it? It was. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the uh, yeah, name of the one I'm thinking of, but I can't mm. now. But um, but like you know. Um, Cuba, yeah, because that sort of thing. It's done in more documented styles yeah. than ours are, because ours are, you know, known, well-known things that fictional writers have added to, yeah. whilst their ones are documents of the time. Mm. I think uh, which have, you know, gradually been turned into folklore more than ours have. Yeah. I think that's probably how kind of that divide between a longer story style. Yeah. And all that sort of thing has uh, evolved there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and well, there's also the issue, and at the risk of sounding, you know, sort of, I know all about this culture, um, you know, one thing about uh, Japanese storytelling is a tendency towards focusing on, you know, the mundane and the everyday and quiet mm-hmm. moments. You know, watching a Kurosawa film, there'll be these long scenes <laughs> where you're focusing on characters walking from one side of the room to the other. Um, and you know, um, pouring a drink, and all yeah. that, because because that's very important to understanding that character and why he moves that way and why he's picking up that drink instead of that drink, um, and it's, just, it's it's very much focused on those details where we yeah. tend to be about explosions and spaceships and you know yeah. And yeah. It's much more direct. I think that's another part of just the cultural centrism that Westerners have as compared to yeah. in the East, where here it's about greatness, and over there it's about becoming great. Yeah. 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 Well put. yeah. And not only that, and I'm uh, I actually know this is one uh, manga I've been trying to read called Hajime no Ippo. Oh yeah. Uh, this is in a flashback. Uh, actually, no 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 spoilers here. But just like <laughs> this is in a flashback of uh, 
like back in the 40s after World War II. Mm. And um, basically, uh, a girl is um, uh, a sick, and uh, there and uh, the guy is just shocked and horror, and, and he just says, "You used to live in Hiroshima, didn't you?" And mm. that was it. That was all mentioned because I I've, I've actually realized this over time that um, not a whole lot of Japanese anime, nothing actually, nothing, mm -hmm. hardly ever mention uh, the new, uh, the bombing. Oh, there's a fair amount. Mm -hmm. well, there's a few, that's again. Yeah, but like... It's the, it's the big one. But it's like, it's a real tragedy there in Japan. They know, yeah. like, loss, because, yeah. you know, they've been hit. Well, what has America felt? Like, 9-11? Well, well, I mean, yeah. it's one of the issues, is that, you know, you have the comparison, and it's not just Hiroshima, I mean, it's also, uh, you know, the war. You know, by the end of that war, everyone was literally yeah. starving to death. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that was really, you know, they, they were utterly, completely defeated just through economic, you know, yeah. uh, means. So, yeah. you know, um, besides that, you know, that trauma of, of Hiroshima and how horrific that was, you also mm -hmm. have people who were just like, no, this, just, this was, you know, there was no way we were getting out of this anyway. Um, whereas we, you know, we've had Vietnam, um, we've had 9-11, but none of yeah. those have had that direct, yeah. y you, know, mm. uh, you know, coming out of World War II, everyone knew people who had died. Not, mm -hmm. just, not just soldiers, but, you know, I had a 10-year-old you know, nephew who died. I had a sister, who, you know, it was just commonplace, which is a very yeah. different from what we've experienced. Well, perhaps, actually, you know, if we take the sort of 40s inspiration, because, you know, Tezuka was straight after yeah. the war sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, perhaps if we take that inspiration forward, perhaps if we look at the actual sort of culture differences in how, you know, us, we particularly deal with disasters. I mean, if we yeah. think about it, what happened to Japan after the war? It was literally a case of, we have to rebuild. Yeah. We have to rebuild now or die. Yeah. And therefore, they rebuilt everything. And that's exactly some of the things that Tezuka and his characters, and because Tezuka was such an inspiration, the characters and general storytelling has um, displayed is that slow building up, because yeah. that is actually, you know, a reflection of the rebuilding of Japan of World War II. Mm -hmm. Whilst if we take, you know, I'm not a, at all attempting to be offensive or disrespectful in any way, but if we take things like 9-11 and Vietnam, mm. it's the way that the Americans have typically gone through it, and I mean no disrespect mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. um, is that you, we all have a tendency to mourn and reflect, mm -hmm. but not rebuild. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, for example, you know, um, Hiroshima was destroyed, okay? Mm. America builds a totem, Japan builds the city. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that's, it, it's very true. Well, I mean, one of the remarkable things actually about that is I was going back to all the Tetsuka stuff, and realizing that he was writing stuff that, you know, now that Japan has rebuilt in 2040, you know, he, 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 he was writing with, with the expectation that this stuff was going to take a century. You know, and and, and, and that, that was that, that view. Is that it was, you know, this is something that we, we, are, we are sacrificing. We're doing this now for future generations. Um, you know, and, and that's something that, again, we, we've never quite had, even in the Western world. You know, we have yeah. a lot of, of, of terrible things that have happened, but nothing that massive. Um, yeah, and even when those terrible things happen, it, this is this goes right along with Many Man's comparison. In Japan, they had that focus on rebuilding. Yeah, exactly. Here, yeah. like, um, I'm an American. I don't mean disrespect, mm -hmm. but this is how I see it yeah. through the media and everything. We don't put any emphasis on rebuilding or mm -hmm. doing better. Mm -hmm. We just tell everyone. We're great, we're still great, and we're going to be great, and then we move yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Which is very just idiotic, honestly. <laughs> no! <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, it's more like a childish reassurance. We just yes. go, we're great, we can do it. Mm. Yeah. Whereas Shit. Japan said, we need, to, we need to rebuild and slowly get better. Mm. Faster, yeah. stronger, yes. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah. you know, that that's what it's all about, honestly. Uh, I'm just gonna say something. Mm. Oh, one thing I don't notice about uh, also in uh, st maybe not storytelling, but I'm I want to focus more on cartoons mm. exactly. But uh, like Jap Japanese anime and manga, what, what we review all the time. What do you always see? Or what do I always see? At least mm. I see a mixture of humor and tragedy, comedy mm. and tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like they have the fun times, they have the beach episode, but. 
Then something bad happens. Stuff's got to come together. My mm. favorite, my, my favorite manga series of all time, Gintama, does this marvelously mm. well. Uh, and, but I never see this in any, uh, like, well, a, a, a few exceptions. But that usually, that's usually like you know the climax of it all. And mm. I don't see it really a whole lot in today's cartoons exactly. Usually well, it's something like that. But then it's like, oh, we're gonna figure it out. But also it's because you know our cartoons are forget. Yeah, that that. that mm. You know. That's the thing that um, uh, Japan has that we don't, that uh, yeah. I, I wanted to get out, was uh, in the 70s, like you said, Gun most of Gundam was made, and yeah. it was a cartoon, but it was for adults, mm -hmm. and, yeah. not, and not like how cartoons are adults for us, like The Simpsons, or <laughs> like, uh, like Family Guy, it was actually like a mature, great story. Mm -hmm. A little cheesy, because that was the sure. 70s, yeah. but still yeah. good. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, and you know, th there's a lot to be said for you know the fact that um, um, you know it's different. <laughs> you know, Japan, <laughs> Japan has such a completely different history in terms of an what animation meant, and, mm -hmm. and Japan has benefited from the fact that it has had these works. I mean, they have what you know what what, what the Sopranos have done for American television in terms of saying, hey, you can have a you know, mature, sophisticated, hour-long, dramatic story that everyone can watch and no one's going to be ashamed of watching and it can tell complex, long-term stories. Which is something that, you know, we started with, say, Babylon 5. Um, we all know the subjects. But, you know, that changed television in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, you know, like, go ahead. Wait, well, with, uh, lot of, you know, late, uh, more modern television series like Laughs and Sopranos and things yeah. like that, older television series and also things like, uh, you know, comics and still most comics now, mm. one of the differences between, that I've noticed, especially between Japanese and American uh, stories, is mainly for kids, but um, Japanese stories often have very strong main characters and the whole building up is part of that and it's the whole story of that character and that, you know, part of that tragedy that you said, Zan, that you get of the whole catharsis of pity and fear is yeah. for that character. Whilst in a lot of more American things, most characters are written to always be blanks that you would always feel yourself as being that character. There's yeah. a reason you see all these polls of which character are you in a lot of American things. It's yeah, because exactly. they're all meant to do archetypes and that catharsis of pity and fear is supposed to typically come from the idea of what you would uh, do in that situation, and what, what would you want, want to be as well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Abella is a perfect example from Twilight. Oh uh, yeah, yes, mm. absolutely. Yeah, Abella yeah, is a psychopath. Technically designed to be a a cipher. There's a, a great thing uh, that went around recently about how you know Bella has very minimal description in those books. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, it's and actually, uh, a little bit of a um, uh, thing. I've actually been reading a series called um, uh, The Hunger Games. And uh, it has a female character in there called um, uh, uh, Katniss. Mm -hmm. And the setting is basically based in this uh, American, like, government is basically king, even though they have mm -hmm. the term president still around. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have this strong girl who has obvious flaws. Mm -hmm. She knows them, uh, but she's still, like, just getting along. And mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's, like, it's like an anti-Twilight, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, even um, through half um, the series, she has to fake this relationship with this boy just to survive. <laughs> mm. nice. Actually, that I mean, no, go ahead, Minnie. I mean, the thing is, uh, like, uh, a while ago when I was a kid, I uh, read the uh, His Dark Materials trilogy, Philip Pullman. Mm. And uh, actually, one of the things I've sort of noticed about that, looking at the characters now, is um, not including the Golden Compass, we're talking about Salt and I found a spy class. Um, one of the big differences uh, between. Uh, that is actually what I find is if you ever sort of kind of see how their um, how their characters are actually displayed, well, you know, Philip Warren is very good at the description of things. Um, Lyra and Will, especially I mean, personally for me, Will, mm. you know, he is meant to be me. You know, uh -huh. I you know every sort of boy that my age that was reading that book, you know, all of us said we were Will. You know, mm -hmm. we are that boy, that British boy who wields a knife and can lead a million people, because that's what we want to be, it's completely reflective of our culture, mm -hmm. um, yeah. whilst, and, you know, and actually, the parodies of those things mm. 
come as an adult in America because you get things like Family Guy where it's finally you get that parody of these different roles and archetypes. Mm -hmm. Whilst in Japan, if you look at their um, more child-friendly uh, child comedies, the parodies of archetypes come almost immediately. They they are there at that age and one and the thing is that you know you're not expected to see personally yourself as that character. You're supposed to see other people and. Uh, you know that supposed idea of Japanese conformity yeah. perhaps is showing uh, sort of the both strengths and weaknesses of individuality, whilst the uh, sort of uh, uh, the whole sort of Western storytelling is that anyone has the ability to be destined for greatness, mm. whilst uh, whilst in uh, sort of Japanese storytelling it's that anyone through work has the ability of uh, destiny and greatness. Yes. Well. And actually, you know, that gets back to, to one of the things that I, I find a lot of folks struggle with is stereotypes in anime. Um, hmm. you know, well, they're not stereotypes, but archetypes, maybe, okay. is okay. a better term. Well, well, yeah. Stereotypes, too. I mean, yeah, they have a lot of characters that just show up in everything. You yeah. Know, there's the, yeah. The, the bookish girl with glasses. Yes. You know, all these, these there's also the nerd in American culture. Uh, absolutely. But it's, it's one of those things where, you know, those archetypes show up with absolute regularity in anime. And we'll get whole shows that we're just, you know, we're going to throw, you know, six archetypes together and, and do that, sh that show. And what I have to tell a lot of folks is, um, for whatever reason, Japanese audiences don't mind that. You know, part of that is, in other words, being cliched is not an automatic flaw to a Japanese mm -hmm. audience. It isn't. It, it cliches says, are fine. There, there are good cliches in movies, like uh, Walk Away from the Explosion, for example, <laughs> or the one-eyed tear that you see in movies all the time. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing, is that we have this prejudice, I think, that when we see those cliches, we say, oh, you know, we roll our eyes. But I think in Japan, they say, well, if it works, you know, yeah, yeah. why not? There are good my, my friend challenged me, challenged me, and it was very interesting mm. because I could not beat his challenge. Mm. Name one anime without at least one appearance of some sort of cute lolly character. Cute lolly character. Just one anime without one. I can think of a manga. Uh. Alright. <laughs> 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 oh no, Phantom, maybe. Oh no, she's. Close, but not quite. Well, at, She's not really. Uh, uh, she's 14. Oh, I know. One Piece. Okay. <laughs> One Piece no, doesn't have one. Surely no, One Piece no. would have parodied. No, surely it would have parodied that. That's right. Never watched One Piece, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't you pull this. Really, you watch One Piece? Card on me. <laughs> <laughs> Barefoot Gang. Barefoot Gang? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also yeah. put Bubblegum Crisis in there. Um, you throw it in Naga. <laughs> um, also, obviously, things like in Nausicaa. Um, yeah. I mean, there are little girls in there. Also, like, old anime. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, like, the Lolly Moe Rush mm -hmm. is actually uh, fairly new. Uh, like, it, it boomed in the 90s, I believe. Yeah. Akihabara. Uh, which is funny because um, Stein's Gate, if you watched it, um, uh, they actually explain the reason of the Moe boom in Akihabara. Uh, yeah. According to the story. Yeah, mm. I mean, and it's just one of those things that was hard to think of yeah. because it gave me that just like what? Because even even if I did mention something that didn't have a Moe Lolly character, mm -hmm. it still had that um, that little girl that was somehow supposed to appeal to the audience, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. which could technically be considered a Lolly character. Yeah, you also have yeah. the American stuff too, like uh, the original um, uh, Titans. Uh, they had the cute uh, char uh, character of. Uh, Crap, what's his name? Uh, the the red Green Arrow character. Uh, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, he had a uh, he had a daughter who was basically that cute girl mm. character, the cute little girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Americans have that too. I'm still sort of trying to think because I know Phantom's one you can sort. I wouldn't really count her as Lolita. Yeah. She's young. She's younger, but it, it, they more do that for shock value. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact that I won't do any spoilers, but it's it's pretty shocking what happens to her in series three. Actually, Oof. here we go, Akira. 
Yeah, oh. Rocky Road. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. You know, there's the old little girl. Yeah. But she's not cute. Mm. But yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, uh, yeah. Being, you know, uh, you're absolutely right. Is that that has become this, this absolutely, you know, almost universal, uh, cliche, and mm -hmm. and it all totally depends on how well it's used. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think it, it just it, it is it is one of those things that's just you know the way yeah. that it's told. Yeah. Uh, also, one thing I have to mention before, on storyline between Americans and, and uh, Americans and Japanese. Americans always want a happy ending. Yeah. The Japanese, they actually more or less, uh, it, in terms of their movies, mm -hmm. their cartoons, they usually have a, a movie that's on a tragic note, but has some sort of happy ending. Like yeah, I know a lot of anime you see usually has some form of happy ending, but mm -hmm. if you think about it, they also throw a lot of tragedy in there as well, yeah. in every single ending. Hmm. Like, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of tragedy in that before, you know, like, they drove off into the city. <laughs> uh, I, I there was a lot of tragedy in Dragon Ball Z uh, before, you know, they all flew off into heaven. Or whatever the ending was, I can't remember. Like, mm. um, in Wait, Dragon Ball Z had an ending? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, in American film and television, there is that... They do sort of do that, although it's a little more rare. Well, American television typically doesn't have an ending. Yeah, that's a yeah. new thing, really. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, more, yeah, ending film, fail. <laughs> more film media, like yeah. um, like the ending to AI artificial intelligence mm. or um, Pay It Forward, mm -hmm. things like that. Have, you, have any of you seen Pay It Forward? Yes, even though yeah. the ending, I I didn't like that ending at all because it was kind of canned. Actually, I think yeah. Spielberg's a good example. Most of his endings are pretty, you know, uh, dark. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're not entirely happy. You know, yeah, that's true. E.T.? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, that's like, that's like one, that was like, that's one director, though, in his, yeah. in his golden years, though. Like, yeah. think about what he does now. Mm. All this stuff is just typically happy, like, happy ending, because the American public li likes it. Mm. Mm. Now, well, the Pixar always has a pretty happy ending, pretty much, but mm. it still throws in a lot of tragedy. Mm. Yeah. Pixar is capable of making you cry and making you feel for those characters. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying, um, like, the majority of movies and the majority of cartoons yeah. always have an happy ending. Mm -hmm. While with uh, Mobile Suit uh, Gundam, <laughs> like, we, yeah. we, we, we find about the, um, uh, the big, one of the big generals, I can't remember his name, you know, uh, he, you know, uh, said uh, goodbye to his blank, the blank, mm. and uh, then what happened? <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah there's some tragedy in there. Even though, even though the the Confederate, uh, what are they, the Federation, the Confederation, Federation, the Earth, yeah, Earth Army Federation. Even though they won, there were a lot of deaths, yeah. and oh, yeah. most of them not very good ones. No, well, remember, I mean, Tomino's original plan for Mobile Suit Gundam was to have Amuro die two thirds of the way through. Mm. Um, you know, he. he was I don't know who would carry the story then. <laughs> Actually, he was going to have it um, carried mainly by uh, Bright and Shar. Oh, if you said Frau Bo, I would have laughed. <laughs> no, Frau actually has this very depressing ending in the book. But, uh, uh, no, you, you know, they're, they're totally comfortable with, with those more tragic, uh, or at least, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. kinds of endings. No, yeah, I, the I, ending, I, uh, I actually talked to my Japanese sensei about um, uh, uh, endings in Japan, like, yeah. uh, well, like well, endings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said the ending that he remembers a lot in a Japanese movie that he watched and always remembers is... Um, uh, this uh, Japanese uh, traditional wife taking care of his husband even when he's about to die and yeah. he ends up recovering. What does he do when he recovers? Ends up um, uh, getting a younger wife and mm. leaving her. Wow. Yeah, mm. and, you know, she's fine with that because, you know, she did her best. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And, you know, that, that story may sound nice, however, one cliche of Japanese, uh, and, and not anime, but just like Japanese cliche storytelling that I don't like is the whole, um, uh, I'm not gonna say love triangles, but this like mm. again, like I just mentioned with the whole like I okay I had I, I had my fun with you I'm gonna go with this other girl sort of story. Mm. This happened in the original Macross, and I grinded my teeth. I yelled at the screen over this ending because I'm just like you had so much connection with these two characters, and it's like oh, I'm gonna go with this girl, even though mm. I, I even though I've kind of known over the series and she's been with other guys for like I don't know two thirds of the series. I'm gonna go with her. So yeah, well, perhaps we can like the way I still consider it is um, perhaps if you 
because uh, of the fact that, you know, like I said earlier about the whole, you know, uh, with America and all that sort of thing, it's more about, you know, placing yourself as the character and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And perhaps if we consider that in Japan, it's much more about stories. It, it, it's stories mm -hmm. and that's it. Whilst way in, you know, so like America, where it's actually more story focused in that sort of manner, mm -hmm. it's considered almost kind of shocking as a series of Sopranos, yeah. you know, it's revolutionary because it actually yeah. was characters and stories, that sort of thing. And perhaps, yeah. um, and when you consider like some of those things, you know, but the thing is that these films that often sell these more high budget, more uh, action packed ones that, you know, come out of summer blockbusters. Um, you know, the reason that these shocking, often critically you know, receptive, well, the, uh, things um, are often not permeated in American media is the strength of the business model of the film. In the end, you know, I'm trying to get into film, but film is a business, it's an extremely competitive one. And the fact is, you know, way to stay on top as a studio is, in fact, to forget all of that aut auteurial crap you uh, want to do when you try and get into Sundance, and yeah. instead try and focus on what makes it into the cinema and its Transformers. Yeah. So, therefore, you know, you just have to have mechs fighting each other rather than an actual legitimate story to go around that, and if the tragedy's there, the tragedy's there for two minutes. The American uh, model of film is, if there's an ending, you get out as early as possible mm -hmm. so that the audience doesn't have to... Uh, supposedly slow down mm -hmm. and therefore can openly think of the ending themselves and also occasionally leave it open for a sequel. Right. Whilst in Japan, they're stories. Uh -huh. They are separate stories that people have yeah. created, the end, because it's all yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and also another, part of, another problem with um, uh, having yourself as the character is, okay, imagine this, it's kindergarten and you're all going to play King Arthur. Who does everyone want to be? Yeah. Exactly. Everyone's going to be the King Arthur. No one's going to want to be uh, Lancelot because, you know, he's so-and-so. No one's going to want to be Galahad. No one's going to want to be uh, Benamir. Everyone's going to want to be King Arthur. Why? Because he, he's what everyone wants to be. Uh, well, no, I, wants to be, I kind of wanted to be the dragon, but that's because I wanted to be a dragon. I know, but the, the thing is, cool. if, if you if, here's the, here's a weird thing though in the in the in the playground, you say uh, I, I want to be that. I want to be king. I want to be king. Whatever. You just say I want to be the dragon. Everyone's gonna look at you. Mm. Okay then. And then that's I got into thing. anime. <laughs> that's the weird thing right there. Like everyone says, I want to be king. They look at you. You say, I want to be the dragon. You're weird. You're different. Get out. <laughs> Mm. Which is the weird thing, like, everyone's an individual to be an indi the big, perfect individual, but not to be the individual of another. Mm. Like, kind of like how everyone, how everyone wants to be the Red Ranger, but I want to be the Blue Ranger, I'm seen as weird. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, think I, just... we have... I, I, I think we've hit it pretty darn well, then. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Cool. All right. Um... Then I have, uh, and obviously there's much more that we can talk about here, but uh, yeah, uh, that was a good, that was yeah. a good dent on the surface, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, I think yeah. we we covered a lot of the the, the overall topic. There's always I've uh, actually I've actually displayed my intelligence in one of our shows. All right, nice. no one saw you though. <laughs> yeah. No, no, knows who you everyone are. thinks everyone thinks it's just a guy behind me just with a script. No, everyone thinks it's the, uh, the black mist monster from Lost. <laughs> I am the smoke monster because I once Don't fell into a gold. <laughs> I fell into a golden river once. <laughs> All that right. Plot twist. So I want to thank uh, Brad. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here. See you guys the week after next. Awesome. Thank you, Mini Man, for joining us as well. One day I'll actually learn what our schedule is. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, and thank you, Zan. No problem, Brad. Pleasure to be here. And thank you, everyone, for watching Otaku Otaku. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, he screwed up both his outros. Against you. Today, right. he screwed up both his outros. And thank you. And as they mentioned, uh, Otaku is moving to a bi-weekly schedule for the uh, immediate future, at least, so we can at least get these shows out regularly and, and get that fixed to you at a, on, on, a, on a weekly schedule. So uh, we will see you next time. Take care. See you, Daniel. See you again, Daniel.